Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Burrowers? Burrowers, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what this word is. <coughs> oh, God, excuse me. Uh, so this is a new game that recently came out. Uh, I don't know much about it, but thought it would be cool since it's new, you know? <laughs> Uh, so we'll just, we'll just get right into it, I think. The wet mud squ squelches, squelches, yeah, under my paws as I make my way through the unpaved streets of the Ninth Ward. I hold my shoes and my feet free, in my, in my free hand, <laughs> oh my god, uh, careful to clean, keep them clean. I take care not to step on any of the broken bottles littering the street, courtesy of the locals. I guess I'd consider a, uh, I'd be considered a local now by most, although I never really fit the bill. Another reason this needs to be done tonight. Oh, okay. Ooh. Well, uh, it's <laughs> it started. It starts raining hard. Uh, adults go quickly. A uh, duck. <clears throat> inside while children scream and play in the newly formed puddles. A brave few uh, slug off the abandoned, the abrupt storm and continue drinking under the safety of their porch <clears throat> overhangs, uh, waving their bottles at me as I, as if to make a toast. I make their motion in return. Notice the shoes in my hand are now completely soaked. I chuckle to myself. <clears throat> Excuse me. When God decides to take a piss whenever you're standing there and standing, there's not uh, much to be done about it. Something my grandmother used to say, but it's a uh, but in that raspy Irish bro bro bro. bro? Not even like five minutes in, and we're pulling out. The Google. Uh, you know how it is, guys. What word mean? Um. Hmm. Wait, where's? Uh, sorry. Uh, definition. What the hell? Uh, fuck. Oh, god damn it, there's no, um, sound thingy, like I normally do. Oh, well. To move aimlessly or slowly. A passage of water. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that adds warmth to even the oddest idioms. The section of New Orleans without uh, paved roads seem particularly waterlogged, leaving a district uh, sulfur, uh, sulfurous odor on anything or anyone that walked through them. I was actually pre it was actually pretty dangerous to walk uh, on them right after a rainstorm. Tiny air pockets can create sinkholes that'll catch you off guard if you step too hard on them. A little girl runs in, <clears throat> uh, runs, uh, runs by in a mudstained dress, laughing playfully as her mother closes in with a, a towel stretched out like a fishing net. It reminds me of all the times me and the, and the old gang would sneak into the city to play with our secret friends here not caring if our new clothes got dirty in the mud. We'd wait for a carriage uh, to cross by the hayfield and jump onto the back, picking up other kids along the way. Sam would usually uh, miss the jump and, pl <laughs> and uh, plod behind, out of breath and useless by the time we got into town. <clears throat> Me et 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 etine? Damn, I hope that's not a name I need to remember. And Charles would play soldiers while Sam, uh, Jules, and Simon 
uh, would stay behind and make us uh, mud pie rations. One time, a teen and I climbed up the uh, rooftop and pretended to fence with sticks until the sun went down. If Jules hadn't pulled me down, I, get, I doubt I would have remembered to go home. Simon always looked so gloom when we had to leave. And uh, I then remembered the beatings that would uh, usually follow these outings. Uh, Jules would uh, try to take the blame, being the oldest. But the adults never bought it. We'd all go to bed hungry and with sore bottoms, pretending to feel bad, but uh, stifling laughter under our sheets, perfectly, uh, yeah, perfectly uh, pleased with ourselves. It was hard not to laugh when the uh, governess uh, pretended to uh, scold us in front of our parents, making goofy faces at us all the while. <clears throat> a, uh, a crush to my, uh, a crash to my left leg. To my uh, left breaks me out of my reminiscing. Some cat's uh, been f cat's been uh, flung ass over tea kettle uh, down the steps of a pub by the uh, rough looking security guard. Any pains hard any pains hardly reflected by the dazed expression, and I can smell the reek of liquor on his breath as he locked eyes with me. <clears throat> as I passed by, he grazed me uh, with the toothy jack o' lantern grin that's. <clears throat> so distinctive and feline as he scampers off to find another haunt. Hunt? Haunt? Uh, his, uh, determination is almost admirable. You know what? This whole thing would be so much easier with a few drinks in my system. Maybe the cat's got the right idea, after all. I glance back at the pub. Despite the, uh, government's best efforts, prohibition in New Orleans never really stuck. People either bought their own from, <clears throat> brought their own from home, or the owner kept it hidden away in the cellars. I thought I look through the, the 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 window and see the patrons inside singing, uh, joyfully off key, playing cards, laughing. Even the bartender was getting in on the fun. No, it looks too rowdy. I'm looking for a soft, quiet descent into un unfeeling before it's time to go. <clears throat> I follow the river out of habit and end up in the uh, French Quarter, following towards the uh, welcoming lights that dot every window and uh, ver veranda. <clears throat> Even with heavy rain, the color of playfulness in uh, Bar Bur 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 Bourbon Street uh, can't be uh, dampened in the slightest. A band plays soft jazz finishing their set as I pass a nightclub, applause punctuated by the clink of glasses and murmurs of, appro of approval. I scan the area, looking for something more quiet, intimate. The rain picks up, and I wipe a few droplets off my brow with my off hand, forgetting I had been uh, holding a banquet, this a bouquet this entire time. The thorn pricks me a little, and I recoil instinctively, cursing under my breath at the stupid thing. I glance at the letter hanging uh, from the <clears throat> from the ribbon holding the bundle together, unopened and practically turned to uh, pulp. What the hell am I uh, doing holding on to this? Suddenly I notice the red light in the distance, uh, setting itself apart from the uh, sea of orange gaslight lanterns. I feel drawn to it like a moth to a flame. The red is bright and gentle, Leaning more towards a, leading parts of the t pink of the sweet uh, hibiscus bloom, uh, than the blaze of a real fly fire. Uh, getting closer, I see that it's actually a neon sign. The lights flickering each time a droplet hits the tube with a sizzle. The light glows gently through the street, the steam uh, pouring out of the uh, sewers below, practically covering the entire storefront. It looks ominous. The small, dimly lit space, surrounded by inky black on every side. But I'm not concerned with daggers right now. I make a beeline for it, spotting a trash near uh, a trash can on the corner. I dump the bouquet unceremoniously and walk up to the building. The sign's uh, fully visible now. A simple rendition of a wine glass and the word bar underneath. Uncreative, but honest. Better yet, 
I don't hear the uh, comf uh, cacophony, uh, typical cacophony. Is that is that a word? Uh, typical of the fully occupied club. Not even music. This is perfect. Oh, whoa. Oh, okay. Uh, I walk up to the door, using what little cover available to get some relief from the rain. I lean against the door, trying to uh, wring some of the excess water out of my shirt to no avail. Ah, well, I guess it won't matter. Besides, whoever owns this uh, owns the joint can't expect a drunk customer with weather like this. I shrug and walk inside, a tiny bell chiming to signal my entry. The inside is wildly different than uh, I expected from its humble exterior, looking more like a high roller's lounge than a speakeasy. There are tables of billiards and poker in the, ba <clears throat> in the back and cigarette dispenser uh, lining the walls. Attending to the bar is a tall, portly rabbit wearing a well-tailored suit. He hums to himself while drying some freshly washed glasses. He'd be uh, totally unremarkable if, if not for the uh, strange leather mask covering his face and ears. It makes his otherwise cuddly appearance a little sinister. He notices me wearing, making a uh, wet spot by the door and waves me over with a friendly grin. Uh, sure is uh, coming down out there, ain't it? Sure is. He speaks in a slow, charming Louisiana drawl. I grew to love uh, after moving here. He gestures me in. <clears throat> he gestures for me to come in, and I t uh, trot over. My soaking wet paws making audible squ uh, plopping on the hardwood floors. The money doesn't seem to mind the uh, potential uh, property damage and smiles as I awkwardly uh, squeeze onto one of the vinyl-covered bar stools. The feeling of my uh, damp ass. Uh, <laughs> Uh, against the uh, grippy seat sends a shiver of displeasure up my spine. I shake it off and look at the rabbit, who's staring back expectantly. Uh, anything I can get you, sir? Hmm? Can you get me uh, a gimlet? Ah, but of course. Uh, coming right up. He starts shuffling around behind the counter, and I take a better look at him. Now that I'm, uh, now that I'm up close, he's husky for sure, but there's no power underneath that cage of fluff. I can tell from the way he uh, effect, uh, effectlessly uh, shuffles uh, bottlenecks through his fingers, as if they weighed nothing. I imagine it simply comes with the job uh, in this part of town. He occasionally looks back at me, uh, clocking my. Yeah, clocking my stares. I expect a little, uh, at least a glimmer of disgust. Uh, the kind of homophobic recoil I've uh, grown used to. But he's still uh, pleasantly smiling at me. <laughs> with a gentle pour, he finishes my drink. Complete uh, with a golden-rimmed uh, cocktail glass and lime wedge. It looks amazing. Huh, please enjoy. <sighs> Thanks. I take a sip letting the alcohol linger on my tongue for a few seconds before I gulp it down. After the tingling in my throat subsides, I relax my shoulders, feeling calm for the first time in days, maybe weeks. Let's go over everything one more time, just to be sure. First, let's find the note on my bed. Uh, first, they'll find the note on my bed. I'm sure Simon will be mostly confused. Uh, a teen? A teen? Oh, God, I just... You know what? I am gonna look up that name. I'm sorry. Uh, that's gotta be like a, a name, name, right? Like, what? No, I just there. Uh, and still can't use the fucking keyboard on a phone because I'm a boomer. Uh, pronunciation. Edian. 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 Okay then. Edian will be angry, and neither will, uh, neither will believe it. No telling what uh, Jean will say. Either way, they'll probably try looking for me right away. I'm going to head east. Uh, 
find some tall trees uh, well away from the roads. And then... Uh, oh. Uh, you know, I, when I downloaded the game, I did see that it said, uh, warning, <laughs> themes of suicide and depression. And I was kind of like, sign me up. Uh, <laughs> I look up and notice the bartender's uh, staring in intently at me. I guess I got lost in thought. Uh, thoughts been troubling you? Yeah, you could say that. I'm not keen on uh, bearing my soul to a random barkeep, friendly or not. Ah, oh, naturally. A uh, solemn little uh, possum is slinking out out of his den to drink his problems away. And on a night like this... You'd have you'd have to be down on your on your luck. Well, I won't pry. A uh, man has his reasons. But please, don't hesitate to let me know if I can e help ease whatever's ailing you. I take great pride in uh, pleasing my patrons. Rain and shine. Yeah, right. As if this is a problem that can simply be swept away. I glance over at the uh, the game table uh, once again. I wonder if this is if uh, this is his way of convincing people to waste their money on them. Would you be interested in a game or two, perhaps? Bingo. Sorry, not my vice. Ah, oh, and what, if I may ask, is? Hmm. Running away. I guess I just don't want to deal with my problems anymore. I tried to do what was expected of me. I tried to go against everything I was taught to believe. I tried to repair the broken bridge between me and the people I care about. I got shamed, rejected, used. Simon just looks at me like a fragile little egg that could break at any moment. And Gene only sees me as a tenant. Lord knows he's given me more chances than most. And, um... Etienne? I already forgotten. Because I'm a bad person. Etienne. Etienne. He just sees me as a mistake who keeps uh, letting him stick his. I stop myself. Almost let uh, something dangerous slip to a total stranger. Was the alcohol catching up to me? I only had one drink. It pains me to see you uh, going through so much strife. It really does. Then why are you smiling? It's nothing. Forget I said anything, really. I rest my face uh, on my hands and sigh. I didn't feel any better after uh, saying all that out loud. Maybe if it was someone who actually mattered. I feel a slight sting as my fingers pass over the scratches from those roses. Suddenly I remember. If someone named Christine comes by looking for me, can you give her this for me? Tell her I won't need it where I'm going. He takes the, the ring in his paws and inspects it before pocketing it and nodding. If it will put your mind at ease. It actually does, in a way. That was a that was the uh, final preparation. While it doesn't uh, completely wipe away the guilt, there was no more uh, strings left behind, left untied. Uh, that is, if you can indulge me in a simple gamble. I roll my eyes. I already told you. He stops me and holds out a hand, rolling a gold coin across his knuckles. It's nothing like that, and just a simple coin toss. Think of it as a good omen towards your travels. Before I can protest, he flicks the coin into the air, catching the uh, catching the light and gl uh, glimmering at uh, as time seems to slow for a moment. He catches it with the same hand and slams it flat on the deck, almost in one swift motion, a trick he's likely done hundreds of times before. Call it.
Okay, so Tails has, like, an actual, like, 52% chance of landing, right? It's, like, it's not a 50-50. It's a 40, it's, like, a 52 to 48 or something like that. Uh, so that's, that's why I typically pick Tails, by the way. <clears throat> Tails. A choice befitting a man like you. He lifts his hand and reveals heads. I slump my shoulders. Now what? Shame you didn't place anything on it. Ah, but didn't anyone tell you, son? Bets are best made when you already know you've won. <laughs> but luckily for you, I'm feeling generous today. All I ask uh, of you is one simple task. Fair enough. What is it? Nothing, uh, nothing about this is actually fair, but who am I to argue with a 500-pound bunny? He reaches under his collar and pulls out a blank playing card. He slides it across the counter to me, grinning coyly. He keeps it pressed down in front of me for an uncomfortably long time, almost as if it, <clears throat> to make sure I know it's not a normal card. I nod, and he pulls his hand back, going back to polish that, uh, per... Our perpetually dirty glass. Just keep that on you for the time being. There's someone you have to give it to. Who? Oh, you'll know him when you see him. Trust me. Okay. Well, I guess I might as well oblige. This could be the last person I talk to. He gestures towards the door before uh, facing away from me, tending to his bar. <laughs> Sounds like it, uh, calmed down out there. Better get going before all the hell breaks loose again. He was right. It was suddenly very quiet. Even the sound of people and cars were strangely absent now. It was still pitch black out, maybe even more than before. It's been nice, um... You can call me Virgil, sir. Hope to see you again. Yeah, and don't think that's happening, as fun as that sounds. Right, I'm going to be going now, Virgil. I get up and head uh, for the door. Even though I want to leave, I feel a, a sinking pit in my stomach, like everything awful is waiting for me on the other side. I've already made up my mind. There's no point in pussyfooting around this. I march towards the door, defiantly. I'm about uh, halfway before my legs feel heavy, as if I'm wearing sandbags around my ankles. I almost fall from the sudden res resistance, and I take a deep breath and keep pushing. The room almost seems to stretch away from me. I try to look behind me, but the view of the room uh, refuses the change, fixed at one point like a painting. I suddenly feel the intense glare of a predator burning in my blind, si blind spot. V Virgil? <laughs> A primal sense of dread makes me turn back around, and I sprint towards the door, ignoring the burning in my thighs from what feels like lifting hundreds of pounds with each step. The hallway keeps stretching an impossible distance, but I can't stop moving. Not with that thing behind me. My knees turn to jelly, and I collapse. I can barely catch my breath. My heart is beating out of my chest. What the hell is going on? Uh, that looks like the volume is really high, so for convenience, I will lower that for a moment. <clears throat> uh, did he put something in my drink after all? Am I going to die here like this? No. Not like this. On my terms! I grab the dirty carpet and pull myself off the floor. The door seems to have stopped moving anyway, almost seeming to do so out of, sp out of pity. The bastard. I start crawling, pain shooting through my knees each time they come down. Tears are burning down my face, and I resist the urge to vomit. Time loses all meaning as I, if I, as I pathetically inch forward. Darkness fades into the side of my vision. The idea of blacking out is sounding better and better by the second. But I can't. Something is telling me not to give in. I feel something burning against my legs. Something in my pocket. I take another deep breath, 
and gave all of my remaining energy for one final dash. The shadows in the room seemed to warp into exaggerated shapes as I lean forward into sprinting position. The gravity on me is, <clears throat> is suddenly released, and I sail towards the door. Ah. I make contact with the knob, and the room is flooded with the intense red light. An impossibly loud siren blares behind me. I barely register any of it, and fling the door open. The same inky black that seems to surround the building uh, before is now staring me in the, in the face. I swear, I can see it blink. And just like that, it's all over me. Okay, I'll uh, turn back up the volume just a little bit. Maybe not. Uh, my body is violently uh, cor uh, corkscrewed into the uh, void in front of me. All sense of direction is gone. My uh, feet fail, uselessly searching for a solid surface. My stomach lurches, and I try not to throw up. Even though I can't see, my body knows it's upside down, and it's freaking out. Organs weren't meant to be in suspended animation. My limbs are going numb. Is this? Huh. I always thought death would come quickly. I begged for it. Instead, it's a slow and cruel torture, drifting helplessly as infinity passes me by. <laughs> I'm given one gift. Time. Time to reflect on everything. My body is entirely numb now. I don't even need to blink anymore. I feel others here in the dark with me. They drift randomly, passing through each other occasionally. Ghosts. I feel some sort of connection with them. Our bodies are gone, but our emotions extend outwards, like extra limbs caressing, uh, caressing each other gently. I ease another pain with a pleasant memory of my own, <laughs> the first time I fell in love. This is the only solace I can offer, yet somehow it's the most important thing in the world to me. This is how things should be. Why didn't I help anyone when I really when it really mattered? I waited and waited for someone to save me, but ignored and uh, a, bleh, but ignored what everyone else was going through. I want to try again. I need to try again. As soon as the thought crosses my mind, my drift accelerates. I must be falling. I feel warmth returning to my limbs. My bones crack and pop back into, into life. A glowing light surrounds me, and the air vibrates with friction as I pass through layers of atmosphere towards something. I brace for what has to be death as the ground pulls faster and faster, but... Nothing. I'm in a grassy field dotted with yellow flowers. Dandelions, maybe. The sky is bathed with golden light. It's as if time was frozen at sunset. Crows caw in the distance, and a warm breeze sweeps over the beautiful expanse, eventually passing over me and ahead towards a familiar-looking building. The old house. The last time I saw it was looking back in disgust. Its former grand uh, grandeur was replaced by peeling paint and rotting wood. But the house I'm looking at now is nothing of the sort. It looks as pristine and welcoming as it did when we were kids. The sudden rush of uh, stimuli after uh, <clears throat> feeling frozen for so long makes me tear up with emotions. I wish we could have all played here, not just the other plantation kids. A teen. Simon. It is a teen, right? Edian. I'm never going to remember this, guys. Edian. Simon. Maybe even Gene. If we had, um... If we had known him, then everyone deserves to experience this. I walk out towards the house and stop as I hear rustling from the uh, tree line on either side of me. I'm still on uh, guard despite everything. I crouch in the tall grass. 
hoping it's uh, enough to uh, conceal my presence. Unfortunately, a blade of grass finds its way up my nose and I sneeze. Loud. A moment passes and I poke my head to see four figures cautiously walking towards me. A well-dressed canine is in glasses carefully steps uh, around the flowers. A, a hefty shark wearing ripped clothes stumbling over the uneven ground. A panther in leather scowling at the other, at the other three with his arms folded. A small fox, a, a fox so small, only his ears poke above the, uh, the grass, pushing his way through this uh, worn-looking hands. My fear dissipates as they come closer. I can see how gentle their faces are. Even the feline, who's uh, intent on looking annoyed, is clearly admiring the beauty of this place. I stand up, I give them all a knowing glance, gesturing towards a flat area. We all move and sit down, uh, the shark plopping down hard enough to uh, cause a poof, of, a poof of flower petals to shoot out behind him. The fox starts laughing, and we all follow suit as the bashful shark uh, smiles a toothy grin. His tooth would be intimidating if they belonged to anyone else, but I could um, feel his kindness radiating out of every pore. The fox clears his throat and speaks with a surprisingly loud voice. Uh, suggesting we all introduce ourselves. The panther uh, sucks his teeth, uh, plucking uh, grass out of the roots with his idle, idle hand one by one. After a moment of silence, the wolf speaks up, his deep voice uh, rolling over my ears <laughs> like warm honey. Uh, name's Mark. Uh, I was just coming from Midtown, and uh, uh, that's as far as I figured out. He tells us he uh, comes from the Big Apple and works at a museum. The fox smiles, uh, glad at at least one of us is playing along. He uh, brushes his uh, big bushy tail against my leg and goes on. My name is uh, Yasuhiro. Uh, just call me Hiro, uh, but just Hiro is fine. He's Japanese, but travels west to the uh, uh, to do uh, contract work. Uh, with a German engineering team. I nodded at, as he spoke, <clears throat> but knew his... Oh my god, this wasn't uh, every, anywhere close to Europe or any city for that matter. The shark spoke next. I'm... Tr He's, uh, he sighs, but continues before continuing. Smile never fading. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Gabriel. Gabriel, nice to meet you. He's from California and was training for his co for his uh, college's upcoming swim relay race. Muffling uh, muffled music is coming from his headphones around his neck as he and he uh, taps his fingers to the beat along with his muscular thighs. Another uh, moment of silence passes before uh, Hero jabs the panther in the ribs glaring at him. Reluctantly he gives us a short summary yet uh, never looking at us in the eye. Her name's... name's Ken. I'm a cyclist. And that's it. Everyone seems satisfied with that answer, leaving only me. Uh, my name's Gray. I'm from Louisiana, and this used to be my house. I say as I gesture towards the building behind us. They collectively scan the building top to bottom, ending at me with a puzzled look. Gabriel scratches his chin. So... Uh... So, uh, do you know why we ended up here, then? Lights a, Mark lights a cigarette and takes a deep drag, exhale, exhaling smoke through, through his nostrils. Hmm, it looks like he looks just as confused as the rest of us, so I doubt it. Then over to Ken, a decent-sized pile of uh, rooted grass sits next to him as he uh, notices my, my gaze and stares daggers back. Either way, he's gotta have something to do with it. I, I swear, if I knew I'd tell you guys, I don't know why I'm here either. I say I say this loudly, believing my own logic. Hero crawls over to me and looks deep in my eyes, his little button nose only uh, inches away from mine. Uh, being this close, I notice how good he smells, despite his clothing, uh, his clothes being covered in dirt and machine oil. His fur smells clean and earthy, almost uh, medically... Uh, St sterile? Uh, like rubbing alcohol. I... 
I don't think he's lying. He stands up, brush, brushing grass off his trousers. And even if he was, there's not much to gain here. I sense no malice in this place. Ken's ears perk up at the last at that last remark, and he looks uh, interested for the first time. Huh. Ah. Uh, me either. Mark sighs and lays down on the grass, resting his head next to Hero's outstretched legs. As confused as this is, is <clears throat> as confused as this all is, I have to admit it's a pretty nice here, ain't it? I take a, I take everyone's a soft silence as confirmation and lay down next to Mark. The dry grass that always uh, tickled and pricked, pricked me as a child suddenly feels soft, softer than a bed, uh, <clears throat> than any bed I've ever laid in. Mark chuckles and flicks my snout uh, with his ears. Happily, I followed his trend. Soon the others uh, join us, laying in the circle. Well, this is a cute cast of characters. <laughs> okay. Uh, I remember they said Mark was the wolf. Gabriel was the shark. Ken is the panther. And Hero is the fox. Did I remember that right? Uh, we lay for what feels like hours. Every minute feels surreal. As if uh, we were... Uh, as if we were distant friends who finally met for the first time. What... What year does this take place in? I just kind of realized, remembering the, the, the headphones thing. Because I kind of thought this may have been, like, a semi-period piece, given that they talked about speakeasies. But, uh, okay. The conversation come, uh, came quick and easy, and pretty soon even Ken was joining in, a bit less frequently. The golden light intensifies, and this feeling of sincerity uh, overtakes me. I feel, uh, I feel tears start to well up again, and I brush them away before anyone notices. I glance over at the others and feel relieved seeing them rub their, uh, their own glossy eyes. Gabriel is practically sobbing, making no attempt to concealing his emotions. Ken is more interested on insistent on sniff on sniffling and writing it away as a bout of a uh, hay fever but at this point i've come to accept his stoicism as him being genuine after another few minutes of silence i speak up my voice cracking a bit i wish i hear the rustling around me as everyone shifts to hear me better i wish we could just stay like this forever everyone agrees gabriel uh, starting to blabber again then why do I feel so sad? <laughs> he chokes uh, through gritting teeth. Hero uh, turns over his stomach, uh, <laughs> over his, uh, uh, patting uh, Gabriel's shoulder. <sighs> I know what you mean. I feel Ken's tail brush against uh, brush mine, and I glance over, seeing something that shakes me. <clears throat> it shakes me out of my cheery mood. I can see through his body. I shoot up, looking back at everyone, and uh, they're all fading away one by one. I yell. I try to reach out to them, but I'm frozen in place. I swipe through Mark's shoulder, uh, <clears throat> where Mark's shoulder should be, but instead I hit the ground beneath. The final outline of their phantoms fo phantom forms fade out, and all that's left is the sound of gentle sobbing. My own. I'm alone again. They look so sad. This isn't fair. I, I wasn't foolish enough to believe in heaven until now, but if for, <clears throat> for a brief moment, I was willing to believe in something, anything, if it meant we could stay together like this. I hunch over, sobbing into my arms, not caring about the mud uh, soiling my sleeves or the snot running down my own whiskers. I stay like that for what must be 20 minutes, refusing to look at uh, the spot where they once laid. I could tell the light was dimming through the cracks between my crossed arms. The warm air was replaced by a cool, wet mist. This was how I remembered it. This is rea reality. My jaw ached and my eyes sting. 
my pants, uh, I, uh, my pants uh, pinch my waist uncomfortably. I can't stay here. Whatever this is. I reluctantly uh, sit up and wipe my mess of a snout off with the last clean section of my sleeve when I notice something glimmering in the grass ahead. I inch closer and see a rectangular a rectangle laid there where Mark was where Mark was before. It's a card. What the fuck? I pick it up and turn it over, examining the intricate art. It's definitely a picture of Mark. Suddenly, I feel the uh, same warmth in my pocket again, and I pull out another card. <clears throat> the one Virgil gave me. I'd definitely forgotten about it until now. It's almost uh, hot at this point, radiating light and vibrating in my hand as if it were about to burst. I hold up uh, the other card. They're the same size and shape. I'll bet Virgil's card was bank. I hear something from deep within me speak. I freeze. Something, some unknown thing within me is suddenly making their presence known. Its voice is deep and booming, as if it's yelling into an empty cathedral. I should be terrified, but its message is clear. Choose. Save him. I take a deep breath and do whatever these uh, mysterious forces obviously want me to do. I put the cards together in my hand. Immediately, they start to glow and vibrate. I throw out my other hand to try to keep um, them from falling, but soon the light envelops everything around me, and I'm falling. My body is floating again. Not as aimlessly as before. Feels like I'm being um, guided in a uh, specific direction this time. I glance around in this new place. It's an empty gray expanse of swirling mist. The air is humid, as if it just finished raining. There were, uh, though, there was uh, no ground in this place. Strange pillars stretch into the sky from below. As uh, I drift once <clears throat> past once, I see <clears throat> it's actually a tower of intricately stacked stones, one over the other, all the same size and shape. Ak Akron? Akarn? Why do I know that word? The speed intensifies, and I brace for impact again, expecting the same weightless feeling, and... It's cold. Ow! It's bad enough that I landed on my ass, but did the sound have to... But did the ground have to be freezing? I pick myself up and see that I'm covered in snow. Not the cute powdery kind... Instead, it's the uh, chunky frozen kind that sticks to your clothes like icy glue. A loud car horn snaps me into focus, and I find myself in front of a uh, massive department store surrounded by even bigger buildings. I dust myself off and glance at the uh, store's uh, display window. The golden lettering reads, Stacy's Herald Square. Huh, wait... I've heard of this place before, but it's in... Am I in New York? Like, fucking New York, New York? Sunday. Huh. Hmm. Uh, I spin around and... I'm taken aback uh, by the mirrored and shimmering jewels, uh, like lights that uh, dot the skyline in front of me, stretching out into what feels like infinity. People hurry past me wearing colorful winter clothing. I feel severely underdressed. The designs of the clothes are much sleeker than what I was used to seeing in the uh, odd catalog Simon used to... Uh, Simon left around the house. And again, the colors... They almost looked like dolls' clothes, especially with how form-fitting everything was. I knew New York was a fashion capital, but some of these women were running around with their legs on full display, even with uh, stockings on. Aren't they cold? The next thing to uh, grab my attention was the gigantic building in the distance stretching even higher than the skyscraper in Chicago 
uh, father told me about. The Adams and Lasan, uh, LaSalle. Uh, these somber coffins of glass and cement uh, practically reached into the clouds. Almost like those stone towers I saw earlier. Carnes? I wonder if the people who work in them even feel nauseous, or if they can feel the building sway when it's windy. The idea of it makes my stomach drop and I crouch down, feeling like I wanted to vomit. Every now and then, someone would shoot me a worried glance, some even scowl. Eventually, they all press on, forgetting me as soon as they, they saw me. I should have been offended, but I don't know know these people, but I still but it still hurts a little. Just how bad did I look? I walk up to the display window to take a better look, but something is wrong. What the fuck? Why can't I see myself? Was this some kind of special glass? No, I can see everything behind me just fine. My head starts to race. I press my nose against the glass. I look into uh, into it until my eyes practically cross. I stare a hole into where the reflection of my eyes should be. Nothing. I sink down on my knees, barely noticing the stinging snow under me. People behind me walk through where my uh, head should be. I must look crazy. Am I then? I see more things that uh, don't make sense pass by the window's reflection. Models of cars sleeker than anything in even my father's garage. Christmas songs I've never even heard are um, reverberating out of uh, open store windows. A woman in a skirt too short to even be considered a uh, slip walking, uh, walking with a man who uh, slips a dollar between her exposed cleavage. This isn't right. I shouldn't be here. But I really don't feel like moving anywhere. New any anymore. I'm too scared, but whatever is uh, waiting for me in this strange place, too many variables. The metal vent I'm leaning on is uh, starting to cut into my skin. The snow is starting to soak through my, my clothes, and I notice I'm uh, violently shivering. It's in the middle of winter in New York, and I'm out here in slacks and uh, a rudy a rudy shirt with no shoes. I know exactly why no one's bothering to get get near me. I don't blame them. Tomorrow's obituary, unidentified vagrant possum found frozen to death outside shopping center. Nobody from home's going to find me this far east. What do I care? I was about to hang myself from the nearest tree, remember? This was supposed to happen one way or another. My fingers, uh... My fingers and uh, toes are numb. I can barely move. I don't know what to do. I don't. A yellow cab pulls up behind me, stopping right between where my eyes should be reflected. I wipe my nose, blink uh, back into consciousness. I can, s I can uh, sort of hear a conversation back there. The driver is saying something to the passenger. A laugh. Some coins are dropped and hastily picked up. And then I see him step out. Mark? Mark? It's really him. Same suit, same shockingly long legs, same smile. He bumps his head, um, getting out of the cab and chuckles to himself before slamming the door behind him. He swings his briefcase over his shoulders and starts heading behind me, uh, towards me, whistling, um, Carol of the Bells to himself. I perk up, both happy to see him and extremely confused. Is this real? What was all that bullshit before? I wince as I turn my body towards him, the numb feeling in my fingers beginning to slowly burn. Watching him approach, I feel my any glimmer of recognition in my eyes. He walks a few steps past me and heads straight for the front door. Huh, <laughs> of course. It's exactly like I thought. I'm the one who, uh, who doesn't belong here. Mark looks like he's doing fine. Why should I bother him? He slowly reaches for the uh, brass handle, very slowly. I notice he is looking at me, or rather stealing quick glances at me before he thought I'd notice. Well, I look like shit, that much is obvious, everyone else avoided me like the plague. A minute passes, he's still not managing to open the door. Was it heavy or something? Was the knob too cold? 
I shoot him a confused look. He stares back and looks away, flustered. Does he recognize me after all? It looks like he's uh, made up his mind this time. He swings the door open with one hand, confidently uh, striking a pose as if he's uh, about to stride in. But he looks at me again with those worn, uh, gentle eyes. His shoulders droop, and he lets the door swing close again. He mutters something to himself, almost argumentative. I have no idea what's going on, but I think he's in... Uh, but I but I blink, and he's in front of me. I reflexively flinch and fall, ba fall on my back. Ah, it must be my bleh, those legs. He uh, cleared his throat in less than a second. He gently drops his uh, briefcase on the uh, ground next to his feet and bends down, reaching a paw out to me. Okay, he's uh, he's got... Wow, those are long legs. What the fuck? Uh, maybe I'll turn up the volume a bit. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, hey, uh, do you need some help, man? It's bad out here. I could almost cry. It's still Mark. Of course he'd help me. Even if we'd never met. I must have let my emotions show because his hands, uh, his hand drops a bit in surprise. He chuckles and pushes his glasses back up his snout his, with his uh, other hand. Maybe something to eat? Someplace warm? I know a spot not far from here. I take his hand and he pulls me to my feet. I brush the snow off myself and try to come up with something not crazy to reply with. Uh, thanks, um, y yes. I could uh, really use that right now. I avoid addressing him by name as that would definitely freak him out. We didn't uh, meet for, for long, but even during that time, he was surprisingly tight-lipped about his personal life. Guess we'll uh, have to redo most of the formalities if this is going to feel organic. Are, are you okay? Are, are you sure this is okay? Me going with, with you, I mean. I hold my jaw to stop my teeth from chattering. He's already uh, turned to walk away, beckoning me to follow him. Huh? Of course! Uh, anybody that uh, has a problem with it will have a problem with me. He pauses before spinning around and gives me a serious look. Whatever the reason, nobody deserves to live like that. Yep, he thinks I'm a bum. Well, I am out here doing my best bum impression, so I can't be too annoyed. But it's not like I can uh, explain how I really ended up here. I'll need to think of an alibi on this on this walk. I really don't want him to think poorly of me. He navigates the uh, windy city streets, uh, nimbly dodging um, <clears throat> oncoming pedestrians and hopping uh, over uh, potholes like some in intricate dance he's perfected. Those legs. Right, an alibi. Maybe I hopped on a freight train, uh, wanting to see the world, and got lost here. Or perhaps my wife kicked me out after a big fight, and I'm still uh, looking for a place to... He jumped over uh, dog poop without even looking. Wow. So, if I use that one, I'll need some names. I'm sure Kristen wouldn't mind. We fought because uh, she's seeing another man. And we're here. Shit. I look up and see a little hole in the wall shop. Uh, Caravan Cafe. The sign has a motif of a little a black cat and a, Roma a Romani getup uh, brewing coffee. I promise the coffee is better than the name. Come on! R right. Hmm. A little jingle bell uh, overhead. The uh, jingles overhead as we walk in. I'm immediately hit by the smell of cigarette smoke um, mingling with coffee beans. The warmth just uh, from just uh, the from just opening the door brings uh, feeling back into my face, and Mark tugs at my sleeves. My regular table's further in. <laughs> we squeeze past the narrow tables uh, towards the back. The place is mostly occupied by teenagers reading poetry and doing homework. 
I even see a few jittering college-age kids with a worried amount of uh, empty cu worrying amount of empty cups uh, littering their table. We eventually arrive at a little white table in the back corner. Spindly leaves, uh, yeah, leaves uh, hang down from the uh, row of planters mounted on the wall, and there's a, uh, a dirty mirror decorated with a colorful tile border where a window would be uh, if this were a tiny, if this weren't such a tiny place. Uh, sorry. Uh... Compared to the chaotic facade, this uh, part of the store is actually pretty quiet. I'm surprised none of them picked this table to study. It's nice back here. Mark twitch Mark's ears twitch, and he glances excitedly at me. I realize this is the most casual I've sounded so far. Ah, well, I suspect it's uh, because they get better service up front. One man's treasure, right? I nod and sit down, feeling the the off-putting sensation of my wet ass rubbing <laughs> against the rubber for the uh, second time today. He waves to someone behind as an older female squirrel walks up with a uh, with some menus and water. Single uh, pieces of paper uh, encased in plastic, and not a single English word on them. Before I can say anything, she already uh, darted back to the cor the counter to meet some more kids walking in. Mark chuckles and slides his menu to the side. Having, uh, likely having a, a regular order here, regular order here already. He looks at me expectantly. So how? Mark! Mark's the name! I smile a little, wondering how long he's been waiting to use that line. At least I don't have to, uh, keep pretending n not to know it. <laughs> right. Well met! I tell him my name in return. He nods, and we shake hands, happy to have successfully uh, completed the first humble conversation. Hurdle conversation. I twitch my thumbs, trying to think of something to say. He notices my fidgeting and places a hand over mine. Hey, it's okay if you don't want to talk about yourself yet. Uh, are you sure? Of course. Nobody chooses to reside on the street. I'm sure it was uh, out of your control. That's pretty presumptuous, but I know he means well. He leans uh, back in his seat, brushing a stray palm uh, fraud off of his face. And even if it was your fault, we all deserve a second chance, especially this time of year. I remember the music I heard earlier and assumed it's December. Christmas. It's gotta be Christmas. Yeah, Christmas is always my favorite time of year, too. Mark looks at me puzzled, his ears perking up. Uh, afraid uh, you're a day late for that one, Gray. Uh, I force an awkward laugh and look to the side. Huh, wow, how long was I out there? Must have lost track of time. <laughs> he looks, um... Uh... Oh, that's cute. Uh, he looks more annoyed than confused now. Shit! N New Year's, then. He sighs, adjusting his collar. You had me worried for a second. That's on me, though. I should have considered you wouldn't uh, have a way to keep dates. I'm sorry. Huh, no, it's fine. You're good, honest. Though, if I'm being honest, I'd rather talk about anything else right now, if, if that's all right. As if on cue, the waitress comes back to take orders. This is obviously the last stop on her route, as she hasn't uh, checked on us in uh, at least five minutes. I realized I haven't even looked at the menu yet. She taps her pen on her uh, notepad uh, impatiently. You two need a minute? Sorry. I look at Mark, and he picks up on my uh, naivety. We'll have two cappuccinos. Swell. I'll have those coming by in a minute. She tots, trots away, her fluffy tail obscuring most of her body. I sigh in relief and thank Mark for doing me a solid. I've never been in an Italian-style cafe before. Are cappuccinos good? It's a little more bitter than French coffee, but who wouldn't notice unless you're a... You're an affer... Affer... What? 
we are we are the Google man today. Edian. Edian. I'll try to remember that. I probably won't. Afik Afik on uh oh, definition. Okay. Aficionado. Aficionado. Shit, I've never actually seen that word written out. Fuck you. Uh, a person who is very knowledgeable and enthusiastic uh, about an activity, subject, or pastime. Unless you're an aficionado. Uh, I'm definitely no expert. <laughs> I think of all of the uh, sugary French press coffee we'd get at the uh, bakeries back home. Usually with less w- with uh, warm baguettes dipped in uh, honey and a bag of donuts to take home. My stomach growls. Oh, that's a that that's a good face. I like it. Maybe we should get some pastries along with those drinks. I blush, though I was probably um already pretty red from being nearly frozen to death. Uh, not a bad idea. So, Mark. Hmm. Tell me about yourself. Not fair to have all the questions be uh, aimed at me, isn't it? Uh, th- that may have been a little bold, but I'll say uh, anything to get the attention off me. <laughs> fair enough. Well, I'm actually an uh, archivist at a museum. <laughs> uh, ever been to the uh, uh, MOAA? Uh, no, I'm still fairly new around here. I'm like ten minutes new. So you work in the arts. That's a very uh, sophisticated field, and you definitely look the part. I gesture to his outfit, and he shoots me a wink. <laughs> Comes with the job. Though I guess sophisticated depends on your point of view. Art is pretty subjective. A lot of the uh, comp- contempor- contemporary work are considered challenging. By other uh, older pa- uh, by our older patrons, personally, I want to see our galleries focus on what has the attention of the masses right now, not what uh wowed them over fifty years ago. The new generation are standing at the uh precipi- precip- pre- precipice uh, of the next cultural zeitgeist. Frankly, things haven't been this exciting in the arts for uh, the art world for ages. His amber eyes are sparkling. I can tell this is something he's very passionate about. It's really cute, especially from such a big guy. For you. Yes, I agree. Art is what uh, we make of it, so naturally it would be... It it would uh, change as culture evolves. I I remember seeing a piece by... uh, uh, Duchamp. Duchamp? Duchamp? Uh, that I've oh that I tried to wrap my uh, head around for almost an hour. I don't think I ever really got it, but it left an impression. He cocks his head to the side, still smiling but with furrowed brows. Duchamp, uh, he was revolutionary for certain, but that's not exactly modern. Right now, it's about uh, Liechtenstein and Warhol, you know. Uh, the stuff uh, they do downtown, it's completely outrageous, but that's what's so great about it. Huh? But that painting was in a recent exhibit, no? At least when I saw it in Philadelphia. Uh, that can't be. I would have heard about a Duchamp exhibit, even if we're we're in a Vienna, let alone Philly. I'm losing control of the narr- narrative. I need to change the subject, but it keeps... Uh, but. It's uh, keeping him engaged. The feeling of uh, something being off, rearing its ugly head again. Again, as if on cue, the waitress plops down two steaming cups between us and tosses some sugar packets at me. I shoot her an awkward thumbs up, uh, ignoring the uh, b- uh, blatant aggression. She seems satisfied with this and walks back to her station, uh, swatting me with her tail as, as she turns. Mark grimaces at her before uh, turning his attention to the drinks, gleefully grabbing one and laughing at the the foam like a puppy who hasn't learned to take sips yet. It's all right. She can be a real card some days. I don't think it's you she's mad at. 
I shrug and look at the cappuccino. It's pale. Uh, is this all foam? I smile at Mark, as if, uh, uh, as I, uh, bring the coffee. Uh, okay. Uh, I smile at Mark as I bring the cup to my lips, not wanting to appear ungrateful for the free food. I take a sip. It's bitter. I quickly tear open a sugar packet and stir it in, but it's pretty, it's still got a pretty, uh, burnt flavor. My disgust must be apparent, because I hear um, Mark giggling. I sigh and give up, pushing the cup away. Hey, it's fine. If you don't like it, we can order something else. I know you don't get uh, treated like this often, so I'd rather you get something you actually like. Uh, thanks, really. Uh, maybe just a muffin or something. I don't really need to go out. You don't really need to go out. Of, uh, go all out on for me. Please. Oh, uh, what could have a. Uh... What could that cost? It could have cost a dollar. A dollar. Mark looks surprised, and I know I've said something weird again. Maybe I don't drink the fanciest drink brands, but I've never uh, paid more than ten cents uh, for a cup of Joe. Everything I've heard about New York is true. How do these people live? Hey, are you sure you're all right? I hastily nod about to offer another excuse when I catch a stray uh, fragrant, a fragment of the conversation from the uh, front counter. The same surly waitress is yelling into a phone while angrily uh, flipping through some papers. No, no, no! I said the uh, poster should have read Rain in 60 with ca with um, Caravan ca uh, Cafe, not Minivan Cafe. What the hell is a minivan cafe anyway? Does that make sense to you? Man, what a bitch. Wait, 66? There's no way this place has been open 66 years with service this bad. So, that must mean... Hey, am I deaf from the, from the screeching, or did she say 66? Uh, that music looks really loud on my settings, so I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Huh, yeah, right. Hard to believe how fast this year blew by. <laughs> can't say it was a uh, can't say it was a great year for me. So, good riddance to 1965, as far as I'm concerned. The room uh, feels like it's closing in. I'm 35 years in the future? I imagine wh what my friends must, uh, must look like now. If they're all still alive. My parents are probably dead. That quiet notion that was gnawing away at me is loud and clear now. How are people supposed to respond in this situation? Strangely, I don't feel much of anything. That's probably a normal, tra a normal uh, trauma response. This is fine. I can deal with this later. When whatever, wherever this is, is, this is, is over. Gray! I snap uh, to attention. You went quiet on me, buddy. What's wrong? I, um, Gray, whatever it is, you can tell me. Uh, hmm. I mean, but he's such a trustworthy guy, though. I think I'll just, I think I'll tell him. I can't keep up this charade forever. It wouldn't be fair to him. I take a deep breath and tell him everything. About Virgil and that nightmare bar. About meeting him and everyone else in that beautiful place about magically traveling to New York by means I don't fully understand myself. I talk for what feels like an hour, not breaking eye contact, uh, so he knows I'm being serious. He doesn't interrupt me for the, the entire time. Occasionally, he'd nod or take a sip of water. I can't read his face. Finally, I finish and lean back in my seat. There's nothing else I can do now. Mark gulps down the rest of his coffee before speaking up. That's certainly a lot to go through in one night. You must be so tired. 
So, you believe me, then? He leans forward, looking at me intently. It's not, it's not so much that I believe everything you said, but your feelings are real, and that's important. And if what you said is true, you've had one hell of a day. I'm stunned. At best, I expected him to write me off as another lunatic roaming the streets, chalk this up to a failed experiment in a charity, and bid me a farewell. But he's, talk but he's uh, taking this way better than expected. I feel a little less crazy. I mean, this is real, right? We're sitting here, talking and eating. There's an explanation for this out there somewhere, and I'll find it. Marka takes my silence as a cue to stand up and pat me on the head before turning to uh, head out the shop. We walk back out, and I wince at the cold air hitting my snout. It's only six, but the sun's completely set. I see it's uh, stopped snowing and sigh with relief. Mark chuckles and walks to the curb, sticking out a thumb. Don't worry. I wasn't planning on leaving you out here again. Huh? He successfully weighs down a taxi and gestures me to come over. You can come stay with me for a couple days. I have tomorrow off already. Maybe I can give you a little tour of the city. This day keeps getting more and more surreal. Regardless of how uh, sketchy this would be in normal circumstances, I'm not above staying at a stranger's house. Especially if the alternative is staying out here. If that sounds fun, I'd be delighted. I'm not even lying. Apart from all of the uh, weird shit going on, spending a day sightseeing with Mark sounds incredible. I duck into the cab, and he follows suit. He has, uh, he has to slouch so his head doesn't, uh, isn't poking uh, into the roof. But he's um, probably used to it at this point. The uh, cabbie is uh, m mercifully merciful and spares us the uh, chit-chat, Mark only having to give him an occasional comment about directions. We ride silent for a while, the fallen snow uh, muting the uh, cacophony of the city around us. For the first time... In what feels like ages, I feel things are finally calm. I feel Mark gently place a hand on my thigh. I shoot him a smile, uh, reciprocating by uh, linking arms and placing my uh, hand over his. Everything is so cozy. Some shaking, uh, someone's shaking my shoulder. I feel drool on my chin. Did I fall asleep? Something about long car rides always put me in a trance. I crack my eyes op um, I crack open my eyes. Mark's still uh, rocking me awake. <laughs> Time to get out, sleepyhead. E sorry, uh, I guess I'm more worn out than I thought. Uh, we shuffle out of the cab and back into the chilly air. It's evening now, and the streetlights are blazing. So this is your place, huh? I'm staring at a luxurious-looking uh, high-rise apartment building. It must be 30 floors. Must be at least 30 floors. Mark chuckles and pats me on the back. <laughs> Come on, let's get you inside. I nod and follow him down the cobblestone path into the lobby. I step inside. As expected, it's an upscale place with a sign-in sheet and, attend and lobby attendance. There's an Art Deco theme that wouldn't seem that out of place in my own time. Mark heads over to sign in and makes small talk with the woman. I wander over to uh, to some tiny tree planted in a bed of little stones. Instinctively take one of the uh, I instinctively take one and roll it over in my hand. It's smooth and cool. I try to imitate the way uh, Virgil rolls coins across his knuckles, but it's too big. I feel my hand uh, I feel a hand on my back and almost drop it. See something you like? Uh, well, no, I guess. It's something I like to do when I visit new places. Hmm, like a keepsake. Sort of. It's something my uh, grandmother used to do. She had all kinds of strange habits. There was always uh, a reasoning behind them. Yeah, need, a, uh, acquaint need to acquaint yourself with the land first. So it's friendly, after all. You're about to trample on it, ain't ya? 
and better to knock first. I slide the rock into my pocket and follow him over to the elevator. Uh, of all the technology advancements I've seen so far, this is one I've been the most curious about. There's no way an elevator operator uh, would want to ride up and down these huge buildings all day, right? The brass door is open and it's empty. Satisfied with my uh, correct guess, I march in and lean against the uh, wall. Mark presses the button from the top floor and uh, the doors close automatically. I eagerly anticipate what the rest of this place looks like as we uh, ascend. We arrive and step out into the hallway. Uh, it's aligned with some inoffensive uh, landscape portraits and a few plants here and there. I follow Mark down the hall to uh, the last door, uh, 35E. I try not to uh, think about how high, how high we are. Keys jingle and he uh, leads me inside. Oh, welcome to uh, Chala de Marc, Casa de la Marc. Somehow, this is even more out there than I anticipated. Odd paintings on every shape and size hang on the walls, sculptures and figures that don't even begin to approach standard anatomy, and uh, stratagenic uh, places to uh, in the corner in the living room. Tribal masks are uh, hung above the fireplace with tiny hands, uh, handprints, uh, figurines on the mantle. I turn to look at Mark, and he's practically beaming. Well, what do you think? Uh, I've been slowly uh, buying my favorites from our collection for a few years now. If I didn't uh, know he worked at a museum, my second guess would be a thief or a uh, schizophrenic. It's unique. It's definitely you. Uh, what do, and what's that really mean? This is all pretty beyond me, sorry. If you explained some of it to uh, me, I'd be able to appreciate it more. He nods and points at the nearest painting to me. It's an extremely um, abstract piece with splatters of green and purple paint. There's a, uh, a single drip of yellow uh, down, the, down the center and I uh, scribble and little uh, black scribbles of humanoid figures that seem uh, placed randomly. This was done by young uh, Dark Ferrand man down in uh, a Dark Ferd man down in the village. Uh, we did a little showcase uh, of local talent a few years back. I believe the contrasting colors and manic energy of the piece represents uh, social unrest caused by the poor race relations in our supposed modern society. What's the yellow represent? Ah, I think a uh, janitor was uh, using it as a table after the exhibition closed. That's probably mustard. Ouch. I guess Mark uh, saw through through it nobody else did. I search around for another one and see a small portrait of a fox with green fur and uh, cut out newspaper clippings where his uh, figure should be. And this one? Ah, good eye. That's actually a vintage piece uh, from a, uh, a Dadaist movement. The absurdity of the image is a direct response to the pointlessness of war. This was probably done by a small group of rebel artists trying desperately to transpose their feelings about the First World War. First, there were more? I'm going to find a history book at some point and catch up. Sheesh. Okay, and what's with the big white one behind you? Uh, I point at the huge blank canvas that takes up most of the west wall. Mark hunches over and searches for something before uh, uh, pointing at a bottom corner. I squint and see a little signature in the a signature in pencil. Henry Gerber. Isn't it great? Uh, sure. He laughs and stops to wipe his glasses on his uh, sweater before explaining. It's a blank canvas, signed by an unknown. I found it at a flea market seven years ago and had to have it. You see, I have no idea who this person is now, but who knows? In a few years, they might uh, be a household name, taking the, art w taking the art world by storm. So, when that day comes, I'll be, pr I'll be the proud owner of an original Henry Gerber. 
I can't help but smile. His endless optimism is charming. I take a seat on the couch and pat the cushion next to me. Without hesitation, he cozies up next to me, clearly happy to uh, finally stretch his legs. It's all impressive. There's no doubt about it, but I'd be happy whether you lived here or in a... Whether are you lived here or in a shitty... Sh oh, that's not... That's not great. Well, I mean, that's a... This is great. It's impressive. There's no doubt about it, uh, but I'd be happy uh, whether you live here or in a shitty shack. Mark slides his uh, sofa off, loafers off, and props his paws on the uh, ottoman. I hear a, a few joints pop as he yawns and stretches, slyly placing an arm around me. <laughs> Anything beats New York winter, but this is probably better than a shit shack. No, it definitely is. Decorations aside, this place it was immaculate. Not a speck of dust or uh, item out of place. It doesn't even, it doesn't feel lived in at all. And I, and I appreciate a tidy household housemate. My old roommate were slobs. Probably not a great idea to put the uh, magnifying glass back on me, but I'm feeling more comfortable now. I'll bet. I don't really spend much time here. Truth be told, you're actually the first guest I've had here. Seriously? I'd be, uh, I'd be shown this place off every chance I get. What about your friends? His expression softens, and he looks down. <laughs> well, uh, when you put it that way, I guess I don't have many of those. I feel like an ass for bringing it up. I don't get, I don't get how uh, someone as uh, outgoing and friendly as Mark could be a loner. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... No, no. Uh, that was a normal thing to ask. I hear it all the time at work. I'm used to people worrying about me. It doesn't bother me. I lean into him. Whatever apprehension he had with uh, that arm behind me is gone, and he gently hangs it around my neck. If tomorrow goes well, I mean, if tomorrow goes well, uh, I can find a way to pay you back for all of this. I wouldn't mind being friends. Really? Are you sure? You've been nice to me all day. Do you plan on stopping anytime soon? He pulls me in a little tighter. <laughs> no, I don't. Good. We sit there for a while, just listening to the sounds of the city and the uh, uh, the, tickle of the ticking of the clock. Eventually, Mark yawns, and we start to get, get ready for bed. I off to take the couch, despite his protests. I assured him I'll sleep just fine, and he turns off the lights. I'm wiped. My concern of uh, linear time has completely gone. My concept of linear time has completely gone out the window, but I know that my body and mind were at its limit. I pull the sheets he uh, supplied me over me and try to relax. But my mind is still racing. There were so many things I still can't explain. And Virgil, that horrifying thing that chased me. I shudder. Uh, let's think about something more pleasant, shall we? Mark. Mark is very pleasant. He'd be the picture... Um, he'd be the, uh, picture next to the word pleasant in the encyclopedia. And very fucking cute. Is he into me? Are people still in the closet in the future? Uh, well, in the 1965, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd guess yes. <laughs> Uh, he got awfully close earlier, and he smelled really good. I feel something in my trousers stirring and try to change the subject before I uh, get too horned up. What are my friends doing now? Are they still in New Orleans? Did they ever stop looking for me? Did my family care? Those thoughts aren't helping. I'm too tired for this. I focus on the ticking of the clock. I count the rhythm in my mind. Tick. Talk. Tick. Talk. Tick. I stir out of a deep rest. What happened? Oh, right. This is Mark's place. It's still so... It's still dark, so I couldn't uh, have been more than an hour since I fell asleep. I slowly open my eyes to check the, cl the clock on the wall. A sudden flash of... Uh, light blurs my vision, and I rub my weary eyes. The TV. 
Oh, that's what Mark called it. Why was it on now? I sit up, and that's when I see it. Mark is here, staring at me. I am frightened. Uh... I almost fall off the couch. M Mark, w what are you... Is something wrong? He doesn't say anything. He just smiles at me. His eyes look blank. Was he sleepwalking? Mark? Suddenly the TV starts playing a recording. Uh, everyone ready to rein in the new year? The ball is uh, coming down. Five seconds left now. Count with me. What the hell? Five, four, three, two. Oh, two, two, oh. Oh. Uh, Mark, what was... Oh, no. No, 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 no. I fall to the floor. Everything is wet. I smell like iron. Blood. What the fuck was that? I can't bring myself to look at it. I hear something dripping slowly. The carpet is, uh, uh, sticking like syrup and stained beyond recognition. This isn't real. This can't be fucking real. I fumble around, still covering my eyes, and touch something solid and squishy. It's the texture of ground beef. Something awful flashes through my mind, and I rip my hand away. My stomach turns, and I retch violently onto the floor. The light flooding into the room is a harsh red, and I feel my head start to throb. I try to get up and slip on the, uh, slip on the horrible mess of everything and bang my chin on the edge of the couch. Before the awful wet texture all over the front of me, and <clears throat> all over the front of me can fully register, I pull myself up again. Adrenaline kicking in. Fuck everything else. I need to get out of here. A weekly, I weakly stumble over to the door and try to redo the locks. My hands are shaking and slick with blood. I struggle with the chains a few times before I just yank the door open. No time, excuse me, no time to worry about a broken chain. Nothing about this is fixable anyway. I sprint into the hallway. Uh, my socks are completely soaked and I quickly pull them off and toss them to the side. I can't risk falling again. Everything here is distorted and uneven, and uneven. The canvas of the uh, painting has rotted away. I head towards the elevator, and something has grown over the door. Something organic. It's pulsing. No time. I look to the left uh, to see a sign. Rooftop access. I need to get outside. Something is happening. I sail up to this uh, short-winded... Uh, staircase and burst out onto the roof. The sky is red. Uh, stormy clouds and swirling in pillars in the distance. There are strange vine-like structures stretching from the sky from the random places. The city skyline isn't bright. Buildings are all in wrong places. Uh, I cautiously walk to the edge, walk over to the edge and look into the streets below. Chaos. People are moving strangely, anxiously. Running on all fours, feral. Hanging off streetlights and wrecking cars. I smell smoke. I hear gunshots echo between buildings further down. I'm trapped. I lean against the guardrail and slide down to the floor. I can't do this anymore. I feel heavy. The panic is fading and is soon replaced by apathy. I lay there for a while. I stir. I must have blacked out again. I'm still here. I sigh and curl up into a ball. Helpless. I feel help helpless. It's it's a goddamn fucking feeling knowing uh, you can't do anything. I can't help but feel I'm being toyed with again and again. Is this my punishment? For what? Wanting to kill myself? Wouldn't that have satisfied you? Why are you uh, shedding innocent blood just to fuck with me? Whatever. 
or whoever is doing this to me, must be enjoying themselves. Virgil. That fucking lunatic. Just let me get uh, suckered in by a pretty face. You think I'm pretty? My whole body shuddered from the vibration of a booming voice above me. I feel my brain rattling in my skull. My teeth feel like they're uh, about to shake loose and I clench my jaw. I peek over my shoulder, just enough to see two massive yellow orbs in the sky staring down at me like searchlights. It blinks. Oh god, that's it. I'm over my limit. My brain is going to is going to pop. Something is leaking out of my eyes and my tear and my tongue feels swollen. I think I'm sinking into the floor. It's morning. I'm laying in a soft bed. The window is slightly open and the curtains uh, slowly ebb and flow. Sunlight dances across the ceiling. I hear the noise of morning traffic. I hear soft snoring. Mark is here. Of course. It was just a nightmare. I'm here with Mark. I'm safe. He's safe. Nothing bad is going to happen. I turn over and look at the uh, bloody hole where Mark's face should be triggering me to scream and push myself out of bed. No, dear God. I tried so hard not to see it. I pull a <clears throat> I pull down the sheets and blur and bury my face in them. Go away. Go away. Gray, is that you? He pokes his head over the edge and looks down at me. His f he has a face again. Thank God. Is everything all right? I, I heard a scream. You, you're okay. Of course I'm okay. I'm asking about you. I, I'm right. I'm sorry. I wipe away the tears and snot and sit and sit on the bed. Mark's rubbing my back and making his shushing noises to calm me down. I ask how I got in his bed, and he says I, I was uncomfortable on the couch and crawled in here at some point during the night. I don't know how that's plausible, but eh, <clears throat> uh, plausible that is, but I'm just glad to be here next to him again. Now what happened? Bad dream? That's oversimplifying things, but I nod. I'm glad you're okay. I was really scared. I was all alone. Hey, I'm not going anywhere, buddy. I promise. Promise, promise? Pinky swear. Cross my heart and all that. We interlock pinkies, and I choke out a giggle. I feel like I'm being, I'm being babied, but I don't mind. I panic easily, and that was one of the worst fucking nightmares of my life. I swear, if anything happens to this man, I'll hunt Virgil down and rip his goddamn head off. Wherever you are, if you're still out there, consider this a challenge. Okay, I'll, um, I'll save. Uh, return. To be continued. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, that was great. Like, oh. What a rush. I I honestly had no idea what to expect. I just kind of, I saw a post about this on Twitter and checked the download page. Didn't even read the description, just kind of downloaded it and, and went and wow. I'm so excited for Gabriel actually, the shark, because he has headphones on. So he must be like in modern day. And you know, th this like weird time travel shit. Uh, and I, I really like Gray as like our pro tag coon. Like, like he's he is a broken individual, uh, and I'm kind of here for it. Uh, and so I, I saw artwork of um I saw the portrait for Mark on the Twitter page, and when I first saw him, I was like, oh, he's like I, I thought he was a donkey. <laughs> Feel a little bad about that, but he's a wolf, and he's got that tan 
mane and you know he's a he's a cuddly boy like another tanned maned wolf that i like yeah uh, but yeah i'm real excited to see this uh continue so uh we will whenever that is so <laughs> i'll see you around